Today I've got a 24 by 30 piece of hardboard that I've covered with matte medium. All right, and it, it seals it so um, the oils won't literally sink into the board. Um, <coughs> I found a photograph of that I had shot a long time ago when I was painting up, I was actually painting up in this region. Um, it's the Truckee River. And so I thought I'd start with that. And we'll start with, without doing any sort of drawing, just kind of lay in some base shapes that we're gonna work with. I know I've done this before, so use a little turp, a little brown, a little green. And we're gonna start right in this region here. It's probably a little thinner than I want. It's a little more watery, so to speak. Or in this case, terpy, whatever you wanna to refer to it as. But I want this to set up enough, I, I am gonna to need to be able to paint back on top of this. So we're gonna go there, we're gonna bring it down, let's say down about here, down about in here. And these are, once again, it's like drawing with, with a dark charcoal pencil on its side, really. It really is, um, it's a form of drawing that is really more oriented to shape than it is lion. Just let this go down, down and kind of down in this region. So it's about down, probably down in here. And I, you know how notice how loose and sloppy this is in the beginning? So it's not hard to make it neater. So if you think about it, I mean just logically, just think about that for a second. It's not hard to make it a lot neater because I'm starting so darn loose and kind of that hopefully it's gonna work its way out. And as in all these kind of 90 minute situations, it's it's always iffy. Is it, how is this gonna work? Is it, is it gonna come off, you know, and I've, I've found myself at times thinking, oh no, no way I'm gonna pull this off. And then other times thinking I have it under control and at both times being wrong. So we're looking all down in here. Right. We're going to pull up kind of this tree in here near the center. Because the format is a little bit different. This is a little longer format, which is perfectly all right. There's nothing wrong. I change things quite often when I'm on location, when I'm just to get enough everything in. So I don't necessarily feel the need to put everything in exactly the spot that it, it, it is in. If design-wise, it's better to move something up, down, over, or, or delete it. Um, then you should be doing that. At about midpoint, comes over here, and then this come, angle comes up. We're going to get the river bank right about here. So I'm going to have to raise some of that. I can see right now, which is okay. Um, we get the river bank and then this part of the tree, and there's going to be a log, which is kind of our focal point because it's a busy part. That's going to come out about here. I think I want to raise that just a little bit, so we're going to move some of this stuff up. Okay, let's get the rest of this kind of overall shape kind of washed in here. And maybe I'll throw a little too much, but I threw a little bit of a ochre into it just because it's a lighter green. And I might as well get a, a base closer to really what I want um, than just rely on, on the other base. We're gonna cover all this. Using the using this little gesso brush, little house painting type brush, just simply, it's um, it allows me to put the paint down fast, and that that's really the reason for it. And not only fast but loose. I'm gonna hold this so it doesn't bounce around too much. It's watching a Australian painter paint a location on one of these big panels like a 2436, and he was having to hold the darn panel because it was scrubbing so hard. And you are, because we're not laying thick paint down. When you lay thick paint down, you don't press as hard. So if I'm covering this up a little. Apologize. Um, so you, you really, you don't press as hard. So, but when you're kind of scrubbing it down or scumbling it down, you're pressing hard. And you're gonna, you know, on a, on a stretched canvas, you're gonna feel the bounce, which, you know, it's interesting. I was just talking with a group of artists in my class last week, and some artists love the bounce. 
Other artists hate it. I actually like it. But I also like switching off and working sometimes on boards like this, a harder surface. Sometimes cradled. Uh, the reason I don't use cradle when I do these demos is for storage purposes. It's harder to, to store a cradle piece. So that's, in case anybody ever wondered, that's, that's the main reason. I mean, the cradle, if you think about it, cradle work is about that thick. This is about that thick. It's just very, it's quite thin. So we're going to get this kind of movement right about in here. This is going to line up where the water is. We're going to see, I went a little too far in there. So oh, let me show you something. I can either paint back into that paint or I can remove some of that paint. So I'm going to remove some of it with a rag and maybe a little turp. So we got a little turp thrown into this. And I know artists that, that paint like this, literally paint with a rag. Okay? Let's see, exactly about where I want it, but over, maybe a little, over a little further. So we'll take that off, clean it up again. Okay. I'm just gonna let you know, Bob Francis said that, um, Gail Dillinger said to be sure to say hello. Hey! He was able to paint with him this morning at Mission San Juan Capistrano. Very good. Gil is <laughs> such a good guy. Besides being a spectacular artist. I tell you, uh, I love to hear these guys that I don't see them all that often because I teach and I don't, so I don't get to go to a lot of these events that other people go to. But um, Gil offered one time um, to come into, into, into school. Obviously, I teach at the Academy of Art now. And so, and he said, I'd be happy to come in and paint for a day. Literally hang out and just paint in a room. People can pop in when they want to. And I'll talk to him. And, and honest to God, it was great. It was wonderful. The students absolutely loved it. Gil is so gifted at not only being able to um, paint exceptionally well, and he was working in acrylics, which I think is just great because, um, you know, I, it, a lot of our students, I would not say a lot, there are, we do have students that want to work in acrylics. So it was really nice to see someone do that because 90% of the people we get, if they come in and, and show stuff, they show it in oils. I mean, I will show in acrylic sometimes simply because if students ask for it. Um, so we're going to kind of come in with some of this light, warm color. So I add some white, some ochre, a little bit of, a little, a little bit of umber in here. Let me give you my palette about while we're kind of sitting here talking. Um, titanium white, uh, Naples yellow, yellow ochre, cad orange hue, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, sap green, I have burnt umber, and then I have some Van Dyke brown laid out. Van Dyke brown, let me tell you a little bit about that. I just started using it lately. Um, really hadn't used it much since school, but Van Dyke brown is doesn't have a warmth to it like like uh, asphaltum or even burnt umber. It's a little bit more of a neutral. So you get a different kind of, of mixture of paints when you use it. So I just, I, I was in the art store. I was picking up some supplies and, you know, I think like a lot of art, other artists, you, all of a sudden something catches your eye and you go, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab some of that and see how that goes. Because I'm always, you're always wanting to try new things and see new colors, new brushes, so. Okay, let's see, we're, we're coming along here. Uh, we just got, I gotta get some coverage. The first thing we gotta do is cover it. Second, and then we'll start worrying about a little bit of modeling, getting some form going, and then right at the end, some refinement. Those, those are the three stages that I always work in. Lay in, which is what we're doing now. Lay in just means I'm covering the whole surface and I'm laying it all in. And then modeling means I'm starting to bring form to some of these shapes. All right, and refinement means I'm, I'm finishing off certain areas. So that's kind of when I use those two, three terms, that's really what I'm talking about. Okay, so get a little bit of a warmth right here at the ground plane. I, I wanna step back for one second and see how I'm doing. See, I've got, I, I need to, this needs to come up just a little bit higher, I think. But before I do anything, I think I'm gonna get this kind of a green in there. So I'm gonna take my white, my ochre, and my sap. And it's pretty light, it's actually pretty green. Maybe a little ultramarine blue in with it. Let's see what happens with that. Oh, 
Well, that's pretty good. It's not quite as bright as I want it, so I'm throwing a little bit more Naples into it, and we're just gonna, hey, that's hard to paint like that. Um, so hang on for one second while I re-establish uh, my reference here. I don't know if you guys ever have that problem. It's one of the problems you don't have when you paint outside. Your reference doesn't fall down. Your easel may fall down. That's happened. That has happened. Wind. Wind is like... Wind is the plein air painter's biggest fear, I think. Um, you know, uh, sun, you can always find a way to move out of the sun. You can always... Uh, and I've, you, you can find ways to move out of the wind, I have. But boy, wind can be a, just a huge problem. It's just uncomfortable to paint in. Now, I, I don't really like even painting in heat, but I'll take heat over any day over wind. I think I might need a little yellow towards the end. I might have to lay out a little bit of a cat yellow hue. Edges. The whole, the, for me personally, painting is all about accuracy in color and, or interpretation in color. I don't even want to say accuracy because sometimes I want to change colors. Uh, but it's the accuracy and value for sure. Um, and edges, paint quality, edges. So we're painting this into that smear. And there's, there's, it's interesting, there's warms in there, there's cool, I can see some more, I'm gonna grab a little cat orange into that color, right about there. Just a little bit. I mean, a lot of times when I grab, I just grab a touch of it, just to warm it up, give it a little bit more of a, of a nice warm flavor. Now I can see I could go darker with it, so I'm gonna add more green and more, say, I think I will, I'll use the Van Dyke in this case, and I can get a little bit of a dark, oh, not enough, too green. Can you mention the uh, type and size of brush that is? Can I what? Mention the type and size of brush. Oh, the type and size of brush is a one inch uh, gesso brush, very much like that. You can buy them. This is a little bit better than this. This is bought at Home Depot. This is bought, this is a gesso brush. They're both one inch if you look at it, they're similar. This has a little bit better bristles in it. It was bought at uh, uh, Blick. And that's generally what I start with anymore. Almost almost all paintings, maybe not as often in my in figurative work, but I generally do start pretty much with this. And that I want about right there, okay? So I'm just double checking. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's get this up a little bit higher. We, we want these ethereal kind of edges where you almost can't feel where the edge is. Nice stroke. That one worked. It, has, it just has a nice aesthetic characteristic to it. A uh, little, little talk about color and value because I, I know I talked a lot about other things. Value I talk about a lot. Seriously, because value to me is the whole the whole painting will work. Your colors can be off. You can be very interpretive with your color if you so desire. Um, that's a, that's a very personal thing. But don't be off on those values. Those values is what's going to carry your painting and really start to make it work. And if you're off on them, it's you're going to make it harder on yourself. And that's where you know just talk with, again with a group of students. Frustration, frustration sets in when you, you it's harder. I understand that. It's hard. Painting's hard enough, man. Why make it harder? So let's take that nice dark. It's it's combination of, of brown, either brown, blue, and sap. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that tree trunk, which I think is right about here. And then I'm going to go to the right. And I'm going to get a couple of, of tree trunks right in here. And. A little bit of shadow on the ground right there. It's a little on the blue side, so I'm adding more brown to it. We're going to move to the right now. Put another tree, and it kind of goes up and disappears. Right about there. And that one comes down a little further down into here. Kind of a nice, some nice shadowy stuff down in there. Some shadowy stuff back in here. Up off of this tree. This is, this is a real... Uh, test in really painting 
edges, this whole painting. Get values and edges. Values because values gives a, a subject readability. In other words, you can understand what it is. You understand its form. You understand its all that. So value really gives you that. Color, like I said, color really gives you kind of a, a seasoning. You know, so it's, it's like bland cooking. <laughs> yeah, we'll kind of going up on this tree. You got this tree in a little bit. Some more darks up at the top. I just threw more brown into that. We'll just get them up here. It goes off the page. Got to get the sky in a little bit. We opened up this just a little bit. Now, come back in here. We got another part of a tree coming down here. And, you know, you may skip one. Boy, when I paint on location, I do. And so, a lot of times it's just not planned. It's just because there's so much going on. It's You have to start simplifying some, some things and maybe not get everything into the painting. Understatement is... One of those things that if someone is a realist, they have a hard time with that concept, understatement, because they want to put everything they see. If they see texture on leather, they want to put that on. If they see a texture on a tree bark, they want to get worry about that. And they don't worry about the big, the, the big picture, so to speak. The whole, as opposed to all the parts. So we're going to go, we have that tree, we have that tree, we have that tree. There's another one right here. Down. In here, there's one back here. We're getting the, the ground. So this tree helps because it breaks this this plane. So we're going to break it about here. It's going to come from about here, and it's going to go at a subtle angle all the way up there. Need a little bit. It's paint's kind of dry, so it's kind of just it's not really laying down well. So I just added more turp to it, and we're just going to come in right here. And a little bit of a shadow. Where do I see it? Shadows are almost minimal because it's kind of almost straight ahead. So we're going to put some shadows. There's some logs back in here. I think that that activity really does help the design of this piece. Yeah, I'd start. I just step back for a second. It's starting to shape up. I don't know the reason. So a lot of people say, well, why did you pick that size? So I'm going to be real honest with you. <laughs> it's the only one I had available. I didn't have a lot. I do a lot of these 1824. Every now and then I try a bigger one. Um, it wasn't That wasn't necessarily the plan, but that's the way it ended up. So also 2430 is big, but it's big for it's big for a 90 minute painting or it's big for an outdoor even a three hour session if I paint three hours on something it's still large uh, you can do a you know you can do a better three hour painting because it's twice as long say if you were doing say a 90 minute so it just depends and you know it also depends upon what what evolves as your style everyone has a different style some people are very abrupt and paint very, some people are much more focused and paint everything in it pretty, pretty accurate. So your style will have a lot to do with the kind of time that it's going to take to it. The other thing is just your experience. You know, if you have a lot of experience, chances are you're going to be able to paint more in a shorter period of time than someone that is just getting going. So it's just, it's one of those things that everyone has to contend with when you're first learning. Um, what makes one, I, I just told this to a group again, um, in, in one of my classes, just I think yes, yesterday. And it is what makes one painting take longer than another. Nine out of 10 times is the content. A painting that has more stuff is gonna take longer, probably. No matter what your style is, it's gonna, it's just, it's one of those things. The more going on, the more it's going to take. And so you have to, one of the reasons that I even, um, years and years ago, when I was teaching down south at Art Center, I started this class called Quick. I, not, I didn't start a class. I didn't start that until I moved to north and came to the academy. But I started within my class a concept of quick studies. So people would get used to putting paint down and not over analyzing it right as they put it down. Right? Because I think that's, I think that could be a detriment. 
Um, you got to give yourself some time to work. And then it's like, it's like as an instructor, I like to, I have to give people enough time to do some stuff before I look at it and say if it's right or wrong. I mean, I can't, you put six strokes on, I can't tell you if it's right or wrong. I can tell you maybe if a little value might be off, but part of it is I don't know where you're headed. And, you know, a lot of artists start a painting and they want that initial part of the painting to be kind of finished, to look finished, instead of understanding that they're going back and they're putting layers upon layers upon layers. And that's when it's finished. So it may not look just where you want it when you first start. It probably won't. Okay, I'm gonna just get that sky in in a second. So we kind of have some of this established. So we have kind of the, the base design that I see here is kind of working. Darken a tree there. I'm just looking back in these spaces and see. I'm gonna put another tree right here. It just feels like there needs to be one. It felt vacant. Okay. We're getting the busyness and it's starting to feel like trees, which is good. So let's get the sky in. Now, I, I don't want to use that brush because that brush is really contaminated with a lot of dark paint. So I'm going to grab another brush that I have around here um, and do something with that. Let's see. Maybe this one. Okay, let's take... That's near white. It's blue, but it's near white. So I don't have um, a cerulean because I really don't need it, but I am using... Ultramarine, Naples yellow, and white, and it's very sticky. I think the white I have is very, very sticky, so I had to add a little medium to it. Yep, still sticky. You see how see how that's dragging right there? So watch that. Now this is after adding just a little bit of medium to it. Watch the difference. All right, that's why you add it, so that the, you don't have to fight the paint as it goes down. It goes down much more comfortably. And we want loose edges. So I really want to push the paint in different directions into that to carve out the kind of silhouette of that tree. A little bit of light pops up in here. And just where you use different parts of the brush because all those, every opening, every is, are not the same. And so if you use the same stroke, it's gonna look wrong. But if you kind of vary this, like there's a big gaping right about here. Let's just put it here. Whether I'm right or wrong doesn't matter some little spots up in here. Now we'll put that tree trunk in a little later. We won't worry right about it right now. Now there's gonna be some green trees coming up higher. So I, this will only go down so far. It'll come down about here, here. Let's bring some in. Oh, then I got that. That's, that's a pretty good little stroke there. So I'm using that side of that brush to get certain effects. A little sky coming through here. I'm trying to get it, the shape, to be as close as I can on my first lay-in, knowing that I know I'm gonna to have to come back and do some stuff to it, because it's just not gonna be exactly the way I want it. Well, you can come close, and it helps. So we got that big, now we've got a gaping area from here. You've got little slivers of light coming through, breaking up in here, different parts of the brush. And down below, right about here, and it works its way down, all down in here. And then some more, and I'm not gonna probably get them all in because it looks like I ran out of room. And as I said, the format is different. The format is, is a shorter format, so, but I will get a little bit of light in here, a little bit, maybe just drag it down. Oh, I kind of like that drag, that stroke. And I will go back and put the tree trunks in <coughs> and more foliage on top. But I, I get the feeling of the way things are going at this stage. Okay, now when I stand back at 
feels okay. It feels like a pretty good land there. Up here, I need more tree there, and I want to put this light right about here. Let that come over a little bit further, maybe a little bit here. And we start to carve those tree shapes out. This looks like I could come down a little bit further. And maybe a little piece of light sneaking through down in here. Okay. Starting to work. Let's keep going. So, let's start to get all this stuff in. And then we'll kind of have a land done. And I'm at about just a little over 20 minutes into it. So we're going to um, figure out... The, this is going to be a, a little bit more of a green. So we're going to take that sap and I'm going to put it over a different spot. And I'll take some ochre and some naples. And maybe some white too. I, think I probably was, I'm going to need some yellow later on. Uh, in which case I will lay it out. It's right. I have a tube of it right here. I just haven't put it out. I'm not that see, it's too light. Way too light. Let's try this. That's better. Little terp, little medium. The, the paints that I'm using today, uh, I use the same paints. I mean, I don't think I have any new tubes, but they tend to be a little drier. And so, and that might be what I'm painting on. So I have to compensate for that by adding more medium because the paint itself is sticky and dry. A little darker. I'm going to add some ultramarine as we move down to get down in here. Maybe a little bit more. Go down in here. Got to keep moving something like this because it's big. It's got a lot of stuff going on, so you can't just sit back and enjoy something you've done and say, "Oh, I really like that." You know, I see people that do that. They really kind of get into the fact that they like something and they don't want to touch it. That's a pretty common thing, by the way, where you get a really nice area. And it looks good, but maybe at the time it looks good. Maybe later on it's not going to be quite the way you want it. So, but a lot of, I've seen artists that are afraid to go back and, you know, because it looks so good the first time you did it, you don't want to kind of mess it up. And I understand that, but be free. If you did it once, you can probably do it again, hopefully better. Let's bring some Go ahead. Some of the busyness going on in there, so it starts to feel. That feels a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to leave it alone. I have to kind of assume I'm, I'm doing it kind of correct. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of adjectives are kind of correct. All right, now let's get, let's get, get rid of that rag because I've kind of destroyed it. Um, I'm going to try and get that nice blue of the water. So I'm going back to the sky color, and I'm adding much more ultramarine. And we're going to put it right there. Oh, I kind of like that. I think that might be right. It's probably a little too blue. But, and that gets a little bit of green influence because it's getting a reflection from the from all of the uh, shrubbery up here. So it's good. Shrubbery. It just cracks me up when I say shrubbery. shrubbery. Um, That works. Okay. Probably can go a little bit on the brown side, right about here. And then down a little bit of, if I had a raw sienna laid out, I'd use it, but I'm gonna use ochre and a little cat red light mixed in. And we're gonna get some of these warms that sneak. That's all too light, but they are sneaking their way in here, here. Here, and we can, this is where we can dry brush. Now, as we go over to the right, way over here, it gets quite light because it's reflecting in this hillside. So we're getting a color, maybe it's a little too yellow. It has more green in it. Color a little more like, say, okay, let's do that for, let's start with that. It's 
probably not as light. No, it isn't. But it, it'll it'll work as a base to work off of. Uh, picked up a nice dark. I'm gonna squeeze some yellow out just so I have it. Uh, don't know that I'm gonna need it right now, but just a little bit more Naples into this and we can kind of it's gonna be down in here some reflections are often go down so we're gonna want a reflection right about in here and then go back to the nice green color and get it a lot of the greens are reflecting the bushes I haven't even put in up above The bushes are up here and there's shadows in them and the shadows are going to be like here and down right at the at that plane and then there's a little, another little bush right about up in here and then this log has a shadow that comes down <coughs> here and is right in there okay so we're starting to get a little bit of of believability into this, for lack of a better term. That's pretty much what we want to do now. So I want to get the rest of it laid in before I go back and do anything that might be considered refinement or a little more modeling. So first of all, we have really dark on the underside of this log. So the darkest I can go is blue and the Van Dyke brown. And it's got a little warmth that looks like it's probably because it's comparing. So I throw a little alizarin into it right about here. And that's going to be the back of that log right, right there. And then we've got the under side of it. We've got this coming down in here. Let's add some green to it. We can put some of this in shadow, this bush right in here. Just keep it, keep it, keep moving. All right, now I'm going to go, it goes from blue to kind of a little bit of an amber color, right about here. Nope, too light. Just threw, I threw some more orange into it. There we go. That's better. About here. And a little bit lighter, so I added some more ochre, and that's right up in, where's it come from? Right down in here, right in here. Nope. I got the ochre, I got the value right, but the color needs to be more green. That's better. There we go. A little warmer, so a little alizarin into that color and a little darker as we move over. Oh, let's get some umber into it as we move over here. break that a little bit. So we're starting to get the feel of it. Now I'm going to come up with a prettier blue right about here. There's a there's a dark first, kind of a, a, a neutral, and it's right about at this point. No, more neutral and a little darker right there, down about here, and then over breaks looking at this in case anyone's wondering to a little bit more uh, alizarin into the color, just at that point, just because I wanted to get a little bit more subtlety and variation going on there. Okay, so <clears throat> let's take keep going on the water. So we wanna, wanna get the prettier blue, which is right about there, which is very similar to the blue that I started with. It's a little lighter, so and it's right about there. Nope, a little darker. Let's do it again. What do you say? A little violet almost characteristic to it. So I threw a, just a touch of alizarin into that. It's very dry. I had it add some medium. Bring it down. Right about there. Standing back. 
getting enough of the enough of that coming out. Now it's going to go kind of more towards browns, so I'm mixing it back into one of my warmer earth tone colors as it comes over this direction. Right about in here, a little bit more warm, a little bit of, of uh, the orange back into it. We'll come in here. So its values are real close. They're very similar. A little lighter right about here. And then more brown as we move over this area. So I'm just bouncing back and forth. As I see the color change, I'm adding that kind of color to it. It's a little more brown, a little more blue. How bright is it? A little bit of, of warm color, kind of almost an alizarin kind of color coming down here, over here. And start to pick up some more of that blue and a little bit green as we move down here. Now, the log, let's figure this out. The log is going to come down here and it's going to disappear right there. All right. And then you're going to see a little bit below it. So back in here is we still get a kind of this grayish color. There we go. Kind of that warm and we get it back here too. Now, that's not dark enough. So I'm adding more umber, keeping it in the warms. ochre into that, bring it down. We gotta use color on color in a little bit. Okay, now we wanna get back into the blue. So I'm not cleaning the brush because it's not a pristine blue, but I am adding white to the, and we're coming right in here. That's not bad. And a little bit of a brighter blue and, oops, and a little bit on the violet side. So I threw, again, a little bit more blue and a little bit more alizarin. And we'll bring it down right about in here. you got to get that color variation. If you don't, it's just, it's not going to feel right. As we move over to the right side of this, it gets a little more green. So I actually just took some sap grain, put it right into the color I was using. And we'll see, this may be too dark. That is a little bit, so I'm going to add a little bit of Naples. And we'll... Let's get it down. Let's add a little bit more warmth to that, so maybe some ochre as it moves over to the right. Ah! I'm shaking that too much. Hang on, I'll try. <laughs> um, so we've got this pretty well covered. Um, I've got a move that or Anna's going to move it up for me guys um, okay. and I'm just I'm pressing really hard is what's doing it so but as it was upside down I just noticed that it's more violet than I thought so I added mixed a new kind of a violet mixture with that blue a little bit of a lizard and it's right in here Over to the right, gets a little bit more ochery, a little warm, little flickers of. The, boy, I could I could see where I could come back and just play in the water for hours. Um, sound like a little kid, don't I? Um, <laughs> and and just to get some of the stuff going on that I can see right now. Got to get the variations, and particularly in moving water, particularly in moving water. That's shaping up. Let's let's cover this. Uh, just take some ochre and some white and a lot of turp and we're just going to kind of push because I don't know if I'm going to have time to do much more than that and then we want to get the dark back behind it go back to my other brush where I had the, a lot of darks in, in this other brush more color in this one more darks in this one so come back in here come cut back in Pull that out. If I see anything that I can change, fix, there's a little bit of a light dark coming right up about there. So this is pretty well laid in. Now let's get kind of a lay in for the where that log goes. And I'm about 
literally, I'm about 10 minutes slower than I wish I was. This is a, a filbert, or an, excuse me, a large bristle uh, eggbird. Uh, they call it long bristle filberts in some instances, and some stores refer to it as an eggbird. I learned it as an eggbird, so, and I kind of like saying eggbird. Okay, so let's get that log in if we can. It's gonna be one of the lightest things in the picture, not maybe as light as some of the white water, but we're gonna take white, we're gonna take Naples yellow, so it stays warm. And I purposely don't wanna go as light as I can, right off the bat. We're gonna go back of the log, and the log comes down about in here. These are guesses. You almost have to live with it. Right about there. That's about where it's gonna disappear. And then we're gonna get a little bit of that backlog. Backlog, ha ha ha. Um, right here. Gonna keep enough medium in it because it's paint not painting on real wet paint. Start with that. That feels, I'm gonna stand back for a second. Don't like the end of the log. It's more round. So we'll kind of leave that alone for a second and get a little bit of some of this reflection down in the water. Down here. And then it gets real dark down there too. Get some nice darks right down underneath that log, right about here. And here. And let's say it's gonna dissipate about there and a little bit back here. Okay, so we started separating them just a little bit. Now now that I've gone that far, I don't want to go any farther. I've got a little bit going on. Let's leave it alone. Let's see what else I need. We see a little of that underwater. So this is, a, this is a very tricky color to mix up. It's lighter, it's slightly warmer, but it's not. So it comes from about here and it goes right down here, okay? And that is pretty much, and I'm pretty close. I can see it get warmer, interesting. I didn't catch that till just now. I can see it get warmer at this point, and then it isn't as warm, but that's where we're gonna start it. And we're just gonna leave it alone for a little bit because there are too many other things to deal with right now, okay? So I'm gonna go back to my lighter brush a little bit, and I'm gonna to start to heighten this a little bit. I'm gonna take white, I'm gonna take a little yellow, some sap and some ochre. And I'm gonna see how that, and it's real dry. That's kind of, I'm gonna go a little more green. Let's just see what this is, real dry brush. Oh, I like that. Okay, I'm gonna use that. My brush is, the paint is just barely going on. So you gotta be real delicate with your touch. A little too much ochre, so throw some more green. Keep going with it. Down here, oops, need to go a little more ochre. Just not mixing up the color really well on the uh, palette. There we go. Probably a little too much ochre. <laughs> so I'm bouncing back and forth. You can hear me doing it. I'm judging every time I put a color down. Okay, that works. Probably could be a little lighter, when it, and I can only say that because I just stood back. So we're gonna do the one behind it. A little bit, not as much. Okay, that's starting to work. I step back. Still could feel like it could be a little lighter, so I threw a touch more white, touch more green. And we'll keep going. Keep 
Keep it unified. Don't break it apart into a lot of little pieces right now. Very dry, dry brush. It's really warm right in here, so I'm gonna leave that alone for a second because we'll come back to that. And I'll get the, the green part, which is here, as it sneaks out from behind that bush. I don't know if I have the color right, but I know I've got the value pretty good. There's some really nice warms. If I have time, I can go back and put some really subtle oranges and things in there. I'm gonna go a little more ochre and a little more white now, because of mainly because of the warmth that I said I saw. Right about here. That feels okay. I can actually add some yellow to it if I wanted to. Get a little bit more of a punch there. And a little more white. Too much. But I did want to get that white bank in there. So I'm gonna go back, take white into the color I was just using. It's very dry. And we're gonna start about here. We're gonna drag it across. Thick paint, thick gooey paint. Get it go up behind that tree a little bit, over that bush, and then over in front of it to about that point. And there we have kind of that bank in there, that river bank over on the other side. Um, gets a little bit of choppy water right at it, so we just kind of dry brush a little right there. And then we get rocks. Now, this is the thing you wanna really when you're, you can go back and you can just nail those rocks, but right now we're just going to indicate them. The feeling of, or, you know, I use the word busyness. I see a lot of busyness and it, it is basically the feeling. And so I'm just putting the light on the rocks right now. And we warm it up just a little bit, change that color. You see it right down about here, get a little different. And then it just, I'm just stepping back to see how it looks. It feels okay. I could, I definitely could throw some more darks into it, but it feels okay. I can see a little bit of, as this goes up behind, there's a little bit of an area back behind those bushes that I can begin to see, okay? So we're gonna leave it alone, keep moving. We're gonna go into this plane now, all right? That plane, we have some darks. I need to, I can see where I need to add some more darks before I add lights, right in here. Down here, up here. So these dark, I already have the, it's kind of your dark brown, slightly warm. Okay, let's see if we can get those in there. I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna use. Uh, probably a knife would be the best thing. Um, because they're kind of linear. But I'm going to go back to almost the color I was using for the other log. Very similar. So it's slightly, slightly yellow. And we're going to come down. Let's try and see if this is going to work. No, I don't like that. But I also don't want to use a brush if I can help it. That's better. Sometimes you do that, you gotta take a brush and come over and clean it up. I'm gonna take a little, one of my liners, see if I can finish off those logs a little bit, because they're, they're not coming out quite the way I want them, um, as neat as I want them. So you try one thing and if it doesn't work, you try another. It's you know, the old Dan McCaw approach of trying to sneak into a ballpark. The problem with doing this sometimes is it can really look drawn, like you've drawn it on. There's a log back here with some branches in front, which I do want to get that big log right there. It's actually even fatter. Okay, three logs there. This is where you have to focus down on one area. 
where before you're looking at a lot of the, the total area of the painting of the imagery and now you're looking at one specific area being much trying to be a little bit more accurate. And okay. Goes right into the water. Okay. And we got a few more we got one big log right here, which kind of comes from right down here. Mixing into that paint. That's why I, I got more medium on it, picked up a cleaner color. There, there's another little log hidden over here, which we'll try and put in, kind of, because I put the trees in over it. And then there's one here. And some little strands. It's a lot of little busy stuff up in here. There, another one down below. It disappears. Up in here. That's too strong, but I'm going to leave it anyway. I don't have time to mess with it. We'll go back and kind of hide it a little bit back in there. Now, take my big brush and see where we're at. Okay. Big brush, white, yellow, and green. And we're gonna start in on, let's start in on this tree. Oh, not a, you can see that went way too light. So I'm taking more green into it. I took too much, I think. Some more yellow, maybe a little ochre to warm it up. The ochre, all the ochre does is it warms up your, your yellow greens. Real dry brush again. Still not light enough. Got to add more white and maybe uh, Naples to it. Let's try it again. That feels better. Okay. Anything I put there, I kind of want to bring down here. And maybe a little bit in there and over Over, overlap that, get that push down here. So we're starting to get those little bit of those bushes in that are on that are setting along this bank. It's got to be light enough. Right now, I'm throwing more yellow and more white into that color. Okay, we're gonna go right here. I would normally do this in more stages, but I can because of time. I'm saying, and by more stages, I mean I wouldn't go as bright as quickly. Just gives more richness, more more overall depth to the piece. A little bit back in here. Stepping back, looks okay. I get a little brown, a little overlap of a bush right there, and the green gets a little more intense down, down below. That's a little too green, so I threw some ochre into that, and we'll just mellow it out a little. There we go. A little brown, maybe. Yeah, that's good. A little bit of a shadow, a little, I mean, a reflection. Um, pick up that green again, because I can see another, some greenery up in here. White Naples, back into the color. Got, I just feel it needs to go lighter. So we're going to get it here. We're going to get it behind the tree. Down on the hillside a little bit. Overlap a little bit of that. A little bit back in here. A lot in here. It's a whole... And I left room for it. I, son of a gun. There's some really beautiful oranges that I really want to get into it. Hopefully at the end, um, back into the trees. Because it, it'll give it a richness. And it won't make it look quite as boring and flat.
Okay, I can go white and yellow to that same color. One more time. Okay, a little, give me a little more color variations, even down here, right about in here. I think I can get, get it. So let's move over. We got this. We're gonna kind of get some wispy stuff going on back in here, up at the top. We gotta get go into these trees. Let's go. Let's get those done right now. So I'm gonna go to my. Let's see. Let me give me a control brush. Uh, I'm gonna grab. That's smaller than I want, but. Okay, I'm gonna grab this, it's, and this is bigger than I want. So we're gonna take brown, either one of them, and blue. We wanna go as dark as I can. Brown and blue, and maybe even throw a little lizard into them because it's another heavy, dark color. And we're gonna come in, I can see a little more blue in it, actually. And we're gonna come in with the tree trunks. First one right here. Second one right here. Okay. Oh. Put another one in. One goes straight up. I'm not copying them exactly, in case you guys are wondering. And then there's one way over here on the edge. Okay, so now I want, I want to take my other brush. Those were, those allowed me to control. And I want to take my real dark brush with the brown and the blue, real dark and go in and really, and I'm probably not gonna have a chance to go back and do more of it, which I would like to. Put the foliage in, and even some tree branches. I wish it was a little drier, it's a little wetter than I want. We're gonna go try and get a little top of that tree, I see. So these are just approximate tree holes that I put in. Now I'm going back and painting the foliage over some of the tree holes and still leaving some of the tree holes. So you're doing both. You're putting in, you put in in the beginning and now we subtract and you go back and forth. I wanna get a little bit better edge up here on this part of the tree. But remember, I didn't put those in as dark as I could have. That was on purpose. And some of the trees come over here. Some come up in here. Let's see what we got here. Okay, let's take my little liner and put in a few tree branches, same color. Sometimes I'll put them in and sometimes they look too drawn and I'll paint the negative space back out. Do, 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 do. You gotta be careful because I, I can use all my time just putting in these and all of a sudden I won't get the whole piece completed. So that's pretty good. For right now, that's all I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna go back to the darks and I'm gonna add a little blue to that color because I see it, I see the shadows go a little bluer back here. And first we'll get this tree in. And then maybe we'll get the tree in right next to it. And then trail here, tree in the background. 
screw over here go in a little better shape. Put a little light on it at the end. Now we'll come over here, we'll get a couple more trees, one about here. We want to get the spacing so it doesn't feel like every tree is right next to each other. So some trees are closer together, some are further apart. Way back here, barely see it. And another one maybe here. And this we can go out and get a better edge on it. And we can get better edges up here. And here, another tree sneaks out behind back here. Get those edges. Change those trail. So that it is it is shaping up, which is good. Whew. You never know. You just kind of hope. Um, I'm going to look up in here and see if there's any more I need to do before I start adding in some lights because I have a nice mid-tone in there right now. Let's see if we go this way. Get it down. Put some spots in here. You really have to almost think like an abstract painter at this point. Uh, I'm going to start to illuminate the trees a little bit back there. So I'm going to take the, my lighter brush and I'm going to take green and mix it into some brown mixture I already had, had on my palette and I'm going to bring some ochre back into it. Oops, maybe too much. But let's see what we can do back in here. Uh, it's a little lighter than I want it. A little, it's popping out too much. It's probably a better way of putting it. All right, let's try it again. Here, we'll get a little bit light, a little bit on this tree. A little bit back in here. Got an ugly light spot in there I didn't want. It's interesting because I kind of, as I'm studying it, I'm seeing those greens have a lot more blue in them than I originally thought. So I actually just reached over and added a little bit of ultramarine back into that green mixture. Now, now it feels like it's going too blue. So I'm going to add some ochre to it. And as we come down here, a little spot or two in here, right there. Look for the masses rather than little tiny spots probably one of the better things that I've said today. Look for the masses because very often, and this, when I say tiny spots, I really mean detail. A lot of people automatically want to go right to that. Oh, look, it's got bristles. It's got, well, we're painting a more of an impression of the piece. And you're using a lot of personal expression with the way you're putting your paint down. And that's what makes it art and not a photograph. A little ochre into that color. It says greens vary. They're not all the same kind of a green. It's really interesting. A little bit here. A little bit. A little orange now. A little right in here. I can see it. Get a little bit more. I'm going to stand back for a second. Okay. Where are we at? Got about, just about 30 minutes. So. How do I feel about it? Oh, well, I feel I'm way behind. <laughs> But that's okay. We'll get it, we'll make it look as good as I can possibly make it in the amount of time I have. And there's a big, a brighter tree that's standing out right here. It's not backlighting, it's kind of edge lighting because it's coming from above. A little pieces of light back in here comes around it. And then we get another bright tree right 
here. This has a little bit on this side, I can see a little bit of light. This tree is pretty light. I'm going to take some more Naples and some ochre, throw it back into the grain. I want to get a little brighter. I'm looking at this spot right in here in case anyone's wondering. I used to, when I would watch people demonstrate as a student, I used to try and figure out what, what are they looking at right now? Okay, what are they seeing? And so that's why I just brought that up. Sometimes I just keep painting and I don't explain what exactly I'm, I'm you know, depicting exactly, what I'm looking at to depict. So. So Tom's asking to create the depth, what color saturations decisions are you making at this point? Well, I'm not, most of my color saturation is going to happen, color and value saturation is going to happen more up close. Um, I, for the trees, I don't want a lot of color saturation because it, it'll call too much attention to them. And I don't want to call that much attention to them because where are they? They're in the background. But as we get closer, like I can see, but I do want variations. Don't so that I just added some orange to that color right there because I see it. I see that color getting a little bit more orange, and I see it getting even a little ochre over in here. So we'll bring that over. Some good strokes happened just then. That was good. We'll bring it all the way over to where the tree trunk is, and then between the two tree trunks, so we get a some foliage overlapping those trunks too. So I'll probably have to go back and, and re-establish those tree trunks a little bit because they're not, because I am wiping them. I'm try, not trying to paint neatly right up to them. <laughs> um, you, you are gonna wipe them out to a degree. So a little bit there, a little bit back, back behind. I'm going to get enough of these trees in in the next five minutes where I can actually go down and start to work on the log, some of the bushes up front. At least that's the plan. No guarantees. No guarantees. Dryer paint. I like that. The dryer paint works better because my paint down below actually is dry enough where I can actually do a dry brush kind of a stroke and get a really it, much more... Uh, much more feeling in the f to, to create the illusion of that uh, types of foliage that, that I see there. So the dry stroke really adds, mean, meaning that it's depositing paint in a different way than a wet stroke would. Let me put it that way. That's probably the easiest way of stating it. Okay, over here, I'm going to go a little more green because it appears that way. Down here. And over here, we get some lights happening. I get some really nice light foliage kind of happening off of this tree. So I went to a little bit of a lighter color than I was using. Over in front of it, down here, down. It's a little light on that tree too that I could put. Now I, I see I can get a little more green now. So I took, I went back to the sap and I'm gonna go greener right up in here. Cause that's the way I see it. More sap and more white, more sap. So it goes pretty green. Again, the dry stroke is actually working for me pretty good. So Ben wanted to know about your brushes again. Are you using the gesso brush from yeah, yes. Lick? Whenever I want to keep more freedom and cover space, I switch over to that gesso brush. So yes, I am. And that's the reason I'm doing it is just what I said. 
it, it gives me a freer mark and it gives me, I can cover a lot of territory quickly. And if you could do it, truthfully, if you could do it a little bit more simple, it actually looks better than if you over labor it. So if you can understate as opposed to overstate, it's almost always gonna work better. Let's get a little bit more green, and then I think we're ready to move down to the log and try and finish up some of that foreground. I don't like, this is all really underdone right now. It just is not looking good, and there just needs to be more variation. It's just too flat of a color. So if I just even scuff that up with, with a little bit more of, um, a little more ochre and white maybe here and there over it, it hopefully will start to not feel as flat and kind of uh, cartoony as it, as it, is appearing to me. But I don't want to spend a lot of time because I just don't have it. So I, I really have to determine where I'm going to put my time now. Which, once again, everybody, that I, I, I run this 90 minute thing very similar to the concept of a plain air piece because you're you have such limited time. You have more time than I'm I'm doing here, but you do have a limited time. So, so let's take this, um, my liner, if I can find it, and let's start to put a few things up front so we can begin to finalize things. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do first. I better clean up some of those tree trunks that I told you I was gonna clean up. Um, right here. and to the left of it. It also has a touch of white on it, too. So if I have time, I can go back and add a sliver of light in there, and that'll really add something. Any loose... Okay. Let's see what we can get going on that log now. First, we want to hit some darks. Not cold darks, but kind of warm. We're going to start with this one up here. It's going to come down, overlap this log down into this log. These are branches, dead branches on it. That's going to go there. And then we're going to have another one that comes off right here. One that goes in the back. One that comes in the middle. And then that casts a shadow. Some of these cast shadows too. This is casting a shadow this way. This is casting a shadow this way. And then we have another branch coming up from the water right about here, up and over. And then we have a couple more coming in right here. And here. There, big one right, where did that come from? Back in here, oh damn, I don't know what it is. I have bad tape today, you guys. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, it's just, the tape is just not sticking. I don't know why. Okay. Uh, let me keep moving. You gotta take one from right here and bring it up and over and down into the water. And another one right on the other side of it here, up and down. And then we got one right there. Got a lot of them. So we're gonna start just kind of putting them in willy-nilly and not, not um, trying to be outrageously accurate with the exactness that I see here. Because I need to get the lights on them too. So we need to come down into this water here. And there's another right there. We've got a few that sneak out from here. And one long one. Let's see, a little one right here. One down below, right here. It goes this way, whoops. It goes this way, this way, and then down into the water. And then one that comes out on the other side. A little one right down in here. Okay. 
I don't know if I have enough of them in there, but I've got most of them. Um, there is light on it now. So I'm going to go back to that light. This is where you, you want to be relatively accurate, but we want to bring the light and it joins this branch. Okay. And we got a little piece of light back here on this branch. Another piece of light right about here. And where does that go? It goes right down in here, a piece of light. And we've got a piece of light right here. And one, I've got them all up in here. There's a couple I missed right in here, so I'm just gonna put lights in first. And I'll put the darks in after. One there, one there. Paint was getting ahead of add a little more medium to the paint. Let me stand back for a second. Yeah, it's working okay. Not as good as I wanted to, but it's working okay. I'm just looking at all these little things. So I'm not saying anything. It's because I'm trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing. It's beginning to work. Let's put it that way. Is it working really well? No, not right now. But it's beginning to. So we're going to put... A lot of little twigs, a lot of little darks and lights busy back in here. Because so I don't have I don't have it anywhere near as busy as it needs to be. Not quite as busy as it should be, but we're getting there. So you can see, it's a lot of activity. A lot of busyness, activity, whatever you want to call it. I, Like I say, I call it activity. And I see little darks. Little darks back in here. And those, some of them get pretty warm. I just noticed some of them have a lot of orange in them. So we can kind of add a little color variation. Back in here, there's a lot of busyness. Just twigs and stuff. And then there is some of the shadows of that back in there. There's also a little bit of light activity back here. Too much. Too harsh. So you just kind of smear it out. If it ain't working, get rid of it. If it's working, keep it. If it doesn't work, say goodbye. Now, theoretically, I hopefully, I wish I could get a little bit lighter on that log, and I'm going to try. Um, I need more white. Where did I put my... Oh, well, here, let me grab this. So we're putting the light a little bit. I should, could have gotten bolder right at the beginning, and I didn't. That's working a little bit better. And there's twigs all over the place. There's little twigs sneaking out from here and here and here. And then there's twigs back in.
these areas back in there. Okay, let me get that down. I'm gonna get a little bit better definition right here where the log disappears. There's a lot of little, right in here. Man, look at that. This is where it's almost better to just take a big brush and smear it in there and then just kind of figure out what you're gonna do with it later. Because this is, this is getting a little too picky, what I'm doing right now. But I'm trying to get to the point where I can put the white water in because that's going to help that part of the log, this part right here. All right, because part of the log is underwater. Part of the other log, which is this log, is back. You can actually see it kind of a little bit back in here. And this is about in here. And there's a little bit of a dark below it now that I see it right here. Get a lot of that in. Now let's see if we can get the white water in. Some of that white water. Oh, I, don't, I gotta... What the hell happened to the light? I must have used it all. What um, are you looking for? White. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this not my favorite one to use. Um, but I see a few little things I could really fix some of these logs back in here and get a lot more a little busyness. Back in here. But let's clean up a brush, my light color brush. Get some of the paint off of it. Pick up the white, because I have, and I pick up a lot of medium, but I don't want it too wet. Okay. So it's white with a little residue of the, my other pigments in there, and we're gonna come in, we're gonna start right about here. And across here. Okay. We'll keep going with it. I don't have all the reflections in I want either. Got a little bit busyness over here because some more rapids. So I don't want it only in one spot. So we want to get a little bit of a dry brush back in this area. Let it kind of work its way over. It's working pretty good. Not as good as I want it to. And what is that? Is there a white water? No, it's kind of an off-white. It's right about in here, right around that branch. So I think what it is is as the uh, water is going around this branch and we get a little bit of it a pull you can see it right here it's a, it's a pull from these branches there a little bit here that's why we're getting a little bit of splashes so you start to get some of that I can take this if I want to at this point get it a little bit lighter I can go back into the rocks I want to hit the uh, this plane down at the bottom right here a little lighter before it goes into the, before you get the water right there. 
Put a little bit of orange in it, maybe. Oh, that helped. Now, I got just about five that. I want to come into this some of the foreground plant. I mentioned that before uh, with some warm colors because I see it. I see a lot of warm color in it. Keep setting. <clears throat> and we'll just kind of. And it's a little ochre, a little brown, and a little alizarin. So it's shaping up. I'm not totally pleased because I just have got so much stuff I'm trying to deal with. Um, but you know, I, I feel if I put like a 10 to 15 minutes afterwards, I can probably get it to look okay. Oh, I know what I want to do. I mentioned it earlier. The background trees had some lights hitting them. I don't want to ignore that. Let's be quite white, quite light, slightly warm. And this is one of them. And we're going to come right and we got a few of the little branches coming off of it here and there. Not not real light though. Got to add. Gray it down a little bit, get these. I just took brown and mixed it into the light mixture I was using. Okay. Let's do the same thing with a little more orange in it. And white. And we're gonna do these. Because I see I the reason I say more orange, that's what I saw. So we're gonna come down right there. And you can hit and miss because sun can be blocked from uh, from foliage, from anything. So you can kind of hit and miss. A little bit down at the bottom, right about here, I see a light. You can pick up, you can pick up a little bit of light. See, we've got this area behind the tree, between the tree. Hit that. Let me see if there's any other light spots. Yeah, there's a few little lights I could back in, trees back behind. I could probably put in a few darks that I could see too. Okay, so we get a little light happening on the trees. A little bit more busyness here. And one thing I was going to do that I didn't do was try and come in and clarify some of the rocks. Doing it with a little, I don't like using this little brush for this, but I. We're so far out of time that I really don't want to switch over. And probably the last thing I think I would look at is reflections. Anything I can see in the water to make the water look more wet. And I see a little bit of the, of the, uh, this bank coming down like right. Yeah, that's pretty good. There, back in here, a little, a little bit. Off the log, already got that off that log. Get a little bit here, down. I already hit this once, but let's do it again. over in here. 
here. Remember I said I could go back and play in this water for ever? Anything you can do to add a little more believability. So I, I see lighter areas right here in the blue range. <coughs> and you just keep layering until you get kind of the feel of those ripples and that water standing back. Those logs just aren't bright enough. I really could have made those a lot brighter. Uh, one more last pass on this foreground bush with green, ochre, and just some of the lights. This could be worked on a lot too. I could take that watercolor that's right down below it, this, and carve back into it a little bit like that. And glass up in here. Could do a little bit more white splashes, which I might do. I might go back and put another, like I said, 10 to 15 minutes into this just because I didn't get it anywhere near as I wanted. But it's set up. And basically, when I stand back, it reads. I'm not crazy about the way the white water, blah, 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 the white water reads right now. So I think I could really clarify that a little bit, let more of it splash out from behind. But that at least gives you pretty much of an idea of painting something like this at this scale with the trees and um, there's a lot that can be done. I mean, brightening up areas because I don't push things as bright as I think they should be early. And I know I've mentioned that. Uh, I like to save that for later. So I say, okay, I can, tur I can turn that up just a little bit more. And so, for example, what I'm doing right now, I'm not going to do a lot of this, but just what I'm doing right now, I'm making it stand out. Just to give me another layer, so to speak, of the... Uh, of the lights on the bushes. So those bushes read pretty well. Not crazy about this tree. Those look like four fingers. So I would probably try and change something in the in that arrangement there just to get it going. But overall, it's got the right feel. It just needs more work. So hopefully you guys uh, got something out of this. It was a little bit a little bit less complete than I would like it to be, but. Um, the idea is for you to get the idea of how to approach these things. And then, um, you know, sometimes I'm going to get more finished because of the subject. Sometimes I'm not. I'm not as... It's okay. I'm standing back and I read. It reads pretty good. Um, anyway, thank you a lot. See you next week. And by the way, I think I've mentioned the week after Thanksgiving, the Friday after Thanksgiving, we're taking a hiatus. We're not, we're not doing anything, and you should too. So, thanks a lot, everybody.